going four wide with 2014 WNBA Rookie of the Year from the Connecticut Sun, Chanel Ogumake, from ESPN Radio Spain and Prem from Seripapat, and of course I got my main man Michael Holler from WEI Radio Boston. Oh yeah, it's a party, so let's get it started. His and hers is presented by Metro PCS. This was for Run TMC, Don Nelson, Manute Bowl, Billy Owens, Sleepy Floyd, Joe Smith, Adonis Foyle, Baron Davis. Shoot, while we had it, shout out to Spree and PJ. How about Can't forget Spree? Mr. Spree? Cooper. After 40 years, the Warriors are back in the <laughs> NBA Finals, and they're the betting favorites over LeBron James's Cavs. Our basketball power index here at ESPN has given the Warriors a whopping 72% chance of winning it all, with the most likely outcome, according to BPI, being Golden State in five. That's the matchup we've all been looking forward to. And for what it's worth, when these two teams last met, Ladies and gentlemen, back on February 26th in Cleveland, LeBron had 42, 11, and 5, while Steph and Clay combined to shoot 10 for 30 from the floor. So, Mike, start us off. For the finals, would you rather be the better team or the team with the best player in the world at being LeBron James? First of all, I want to I put this out there. The fact that you didn't mention World B free in you the did. Golden State rundown you did. is criminal. <laughs> world B taught me how to shoot. But anyway, uh, I would rather be where, where Golden State is right now. They are the better team. They don't have the best player in the world, but they do have the reigning MVP. 67 wins in a historically great Western Conference. Top offensive team in basketball. Defensive rating, number one defensive rating in basketball. They're better. They just have so many players outside of Clay and outside of Steph. They got players that you have to account for. If Clay and Steph have an off day. Look at Harrison Barnes last night. Look at night. Harrison Barnes. And what did I say to you last night? I stayed at the Smith residence last night, <laughs> and it's spectacular. But anyway, I stayed at the Smith residence last night, and I said, if you have a secondary candidate for NBA Finals MVP, which rarely happens, but let's say you do. Yeah, like a Danny they, Green. Yeah, well, Danny Green almost. Yeah, yeah. They won that series the first time yeah. against uh, Miami. Harrison Barnes yeah, no, they're definitely is one of those deeper. guys. And you look at Cleveland, I just don't think Cleveland has somebody like that, whether it's Harrison Barnes or whether it's Draymond Green, where you say, Okay, I gotta account for that. All By right. the way, didn't you guys have a slumber party last night? Aren't you supposed to be off today? Uh, no, I couldn't resist being a part of this I know. party. I just want to say, I just want to give him a shout out because that's how big of a team player he is. <laughs> who, you, who would you rather be, Warriors or Cavs? Or I would finals? rather be LeBron, James, and the Cavs because okay. I think a lot of people aren't giving this Cleveland team enough credit. Yes, mm. I know the Warriors are going to be favored, but the X factor here is LeBron James. I mean, this is a guy that has single-handedly carried nearly every single team that he's been with to the playoffs in Miami, four consecutive NBA yeah, finals. Some help. You act like he's been surrounded by scrubs his whole career. Guy. But here's the cool thing about this guy, though. Five consecutive NBA Finals appearances. That's something that Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson have all not done. And his ability to elevate mm -hmm. all the players around him. Okay. Del Vadova, right. J.R. Smith, mm -hmm. Iman Shumpert. That's the X Factor. Okay. I'm going to go with LeBron James in the cap. Janae, who would you rather be? Everyone talks about who's the greatest player of all time. And, you know, I think what bolsters LeBron's argument is oh, that his, 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 We'll get to that I'm later. Not, I know, I know. I'm just it. saying, I'm making a point. I'm just making a point. His leadership style is so trendy. I think that his leadership style empowers others. Yeah. And then being the best player on a team will immediately make you play with more confidence. That's why everyone's here playing, like, Jamar, uh, J.R. Smith. Um, everyone is just taking their time. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I just think that his leadership style is just in an uncharted waters mm -hmm. and that being the best player on your team can really elevate you to another level. So you think just having LeBron James this will make everybody that much better to offset Golden State's depth. I'm with Michael. I would rather be the best team because this is where I think, look, you're right about LeBron James. Everybody knows he makes everybody better. And I still say J.R. Smith, Iman Shumper, they, they made LeBron look good too by draining a lot of those open shots he's creating. Matthew Della Badova, uh, Timothy Mosgoff, Tristan Thompson's been a revelation. However, they did it against a substandard, subpar Eastern Conference caliber of competition. Whereas when you look at the Warriors, I think this is where some of Cleveland's deficiencies start to get exposed. It's been real trendy, your word, it's been real trendy to say, oh, they didn't need Kevin Love. This is where they'll miss Kevin Love, okay? This is where they'll miss that extra firepower because of the guys like a Harrison Barnes, like a Sean Livingston, like a Draymond Green, like a Leandro Barbosa who can get you buckets Thank if you. Clay and Steph Curry now, aren't all going all the guys, though, Kyrie Irving is one of the few Kyrie's guys limited, that can actually though. limited. But let's just say he's got a whole week off yeah, to at least recover. That's rest, true. And he's going to be one of those few guys that can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Curry. 
All right. We'll see. I mentioned we'll Klay Thompson. Scary moment in the fourth quarter last night. Another one for the Warriors. And Klay took a Trevor Ariza knee to the side of his head. He was obviously shaken up and needed stitches for an ear laceration. Our Warriors doctors cleared him to return to the game, although he remained on the bench. But according to his father, Michael, interest in spelling Michael's always had, I loved it, uh, Clay was throwing up last night and didn't drive himself home. However, Michael Thompson says that Clay will be okay for game one, which as Prem just mentioned, isn't for another week. The Warriors say that Clay was clear because his concussion-like symptoms didn't onset until after the game. Janae, as an active athlete in the WNBA, does this prove that the concussion protocol is flawed? I think it is definitely flawed, but I think that it is the right protocol. The right calls have been made so far. The key is initially symptom-free. We look at what happened to Steph. He was initially symptom-free. He came back, returned to the game, and was able to play the next game. We look at Klay Thompson. He was initially symptom-free. Now his symptoms came later, and that's what they'll have to address. There's also confusion as to whether or not they actually gave him the concussion protocol. They say they did. Doris Burke said during the broadcast that they didn't. They just saw the bleeding ear. Well, I would have to give the favor to the concussion system right now because I think it is out there to protect the athletes, and that Klay, in the end, his symptoms did come later, throwing mm -hmm. up. We saw the blood coming out of the ear. That was very dramatic. But at the same time, I think that his concussion symptoms, it was addressed later on. He has plenty of time to rest. Steph, he didn't have that much time, but his symptoms were much different. Okay. So, so I think no the system harm, no is foul. fine. I think the system is fine. No harm, no foul. But I do think that it's one of those things where we need to invest more money in studying concussions because you can't pinpoint say you had a concussion. Okay. Well, I think, something, I think something like this actually revealed a lot of flaws in the system, but only just because it doesn't happen too often in the NBA. And ironically, we're looking at the Golden State Warriors who were relatively healthy for much of the regular season. All of a sudden, not only do they suffer two big injuries to their two key players, but they suffer head injuries. And the thing about the protocol, medical experts outside the NBA are even saying that the tests are actually imperfect. You don't necessarily see the symptoms from a concussion until 24 hours yeah. later. Hmm. Because of that, it's putting everybody in a very difficult position. Right. So, yes, it is flawed. It will improve, and hopefully something like this will preempt this. But, you know, Chanae, you use an interesting uh, phrase, and you talked about protecting the players. Well, I'm going to uh, take it to another level. How about protect players from themselves? Because this is just... That's the football com Isn't this just problem. common sense? Yeah. Yes. Think about this. If you went to the doctor, you go to the doctor and say, yeah, hey, doc, uh, a 6'8", 215-pound guy kicked me in the head. Okay, you would not, he, you would be at the doctor's office for a little bit. You wouldn't be like, oh, let me just check you out. Let me you look over. Okay, get back out there. It, it's, what's the hurry? What's the hurry for Clay Thompson to get back in the game? Yeah. What was the hurry for Steph Curry to get back in the when game? You see a guy Once that happens, that you got to be out of the game. And I know the players want to come back, and we yeah. celebrate that here. I'll tell you, hey, look at the toughness. It's almost like a hockey mentality. Hey, he's a hockey player. He's a basketball player. He's, a tough, he's tough. It's not about toughness. It's about protecting them. Because so we just don't know I think, enough. I think yeah. common sense, once it happens, out of the game. But, but I do understand. You're right. I do understand the dilemma, though, because if you administer the protocol and he's not symptomatic, he's asymptomatic, or if it's a, an ear bleed and he looks fine and he wants to go in, it's like as, a, as an organization, I know this is why we often call for independent examinations in neurologists and whatnot, but as an organization, if the player looks fine at that moment and you're playing to try to go to the NBA Finals, he says he's fine. Look, I get everything you said. I agree right, with you. Right. Sometimes you got to err way I mean, on the side of caution and say, you know what? You took a knee to the head. Most people will be concussed. We're going to assume you concussed for your own safety. You see I how get he it. went down. You see how he just like uh, crumpled but, to but, the yeah. But Michael, we thought Steph, or we all assumed Steph Curry was concussed. We're like, that looks like a duck and walks like a duck and quacks like it. That's a concussion. That's what I would have said for Steph hey, Curry. Apparently, he wasn't. I'm not sure still about Steph Curry. Because I'm none not, of us knows enough I'm about it. Sure we don't about know that. enough about concussions. Concussions are so elusive that I don't think we'll ever have an answer like you said we have to protect the players from ourselves if I had a knee to the head I'm gonna be wobbling out there like I gotta play and this is yeah. the you know this is a chance to get to the final so no matter what we argue or say it's gonna be a very difficult thing to address because yeah. it's inconclusive it's an imperfect. Yeah. Maybe, if, there's, maybe right, if there's anything that we the learn extreme. from the NFL is that just because you don't see the symptoms doesn't mean that they're suffering something Absolutely. like that all right let's talk about James Harden at times he seemed to be playing for the Golden State Warriors <laughs> <Point> right? <shaving>? <laughs> <laughs> because he could not stop turning that ball over the Rockets shooting guard coughed the ball up 13 times which is the most in any playoff game since turnovers started being tracked in 1977 and 78 so the beer talking about those turnovers after the game what, what would be your lasting memory I mean for you to have such a bad night individually in the last game but what what do you think you'll take away from it as a memory from the year um just uh, value valuing possessions you know in, in a postseason you know it's tough um, 
like I said, the first two games, you know, you take away some of those possessions that we gave away, and, and it's a different series. And so um, just valuing the ball a lot more, um, especially, you know, if I'm going to be doing a lot of ball handling, um, just making sure that I, I mean, you know, not give away easy baskets. And so tonight's was another case, you know, for myself. 13 turnovers is, 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 is unacceptable. <laughs> you think? Value the ball. That would be a start. So what in the world happened to Harden in game five, Janae? You know what? Everyone is giving it so hard to Harden. I think that, honestly, he's put the team on his back throughout the season with, without Dwight. Yes. He takes ownership of his own mistakes. We saw when he literally dropped the ball, muffed the ball, and lost the game in the final possession when Steph Curry made the intelligent play and doubled him. I don't think we give enough credit to what he's done the entire year. And I think that the stat, you know, where he set the record for postseason turnovers, that's what everyone sees, but people don't talk about how he's brought the team to where he is. No, today. yes, we do, Shanae. 13 turnovers. Let me tell you, 13? Wow. One of the greatest players of all time said, I have failed, so that is why I succeed. He failed in OKC when he was the sixth man off the bench and had a really tough series, you know, mm -hmm. in the finals against whoever. Against and LeBron, yeah. Yes, exactly, exa against LeBron. And then, then he succeeded in Houston. I think that he failed, and he, this will motivate him in the offseason. I got you. So that he succeeds. <laughs> Never mind. I'm, next I time feel he you. Will be, next time he will be MVP. I'm motivated. I, thank you. That's a great pep next talk, Next time Shanae. he will be MVP. But 13, if you committed 13 <laughs> turnovers in the game. I would go and walk and sit myself on the bench. You're right. You're <laughs> you right. Know, I, 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 I mean, you want to talk about, like, look, you're right. They defended him very well. They, they crowded did. his space. They seem to have a great scouting report on him. Didn't let him dance with the ball. I'm with you. But by unofficial card, I had six bad passes, a travel, mm. a foul. He, had, he got ripped. James Harden was just getting ripped like a kid. He had three just bad ball handling How about situations. 13? How about number 13? Just like try to dribble hey, between the legs. Hey, number 13 is a good number. And, and that's, just your, that's my number. That's my favorite number. It wasn't Parton's last night. That was his number last night for, uh, for most of the reasons. I, I can't explain it, Michael. Can you? you? I can't explain it. I think, I think a couple things. One, he said trying to do too much, and everybody said he was trying to do too much. But here's another thing, and this is where you have to give back to Golden State and why they're going to win the NBA Finals, go back to their coaching staff. So Ron Adams gave their defensive guru, gave a great interview with the San Jose Mercury News when he was talking about Steph and how Steph needed to improve defensively. Use the example of John Stockton. He said John Stockton used to get credit for being a good defensive player in this league. He wasn't. He knew the offenses that he was going against, and so he had an advantage mm -hmm. of being in the right place at the right time. And I think that's exactly what happened to Harden last night. They figured out what his tendencies well, they were. Well, they adjusted as the they, series they went on. Adjusted they adjusted, and they so took clay off of the with other people. Yeah. Of Harden having the ball too much, yeah. and trying to do too much. And the Warriors knowing exactly what he was trying to Perm, do. Yeah, the, the Warriors did a really good job of defending him. They put Andre Iguodala and also mixed in with Clay Thompson. But I'm with you. I'm not going to be so tough on him. Maybe it's a girl thing. I don't know. Nobody's being tough on him. He was <laughs> not a regular season thing. MVP. Stop it. it is not a girl thing. It is Stop it. a sympathy yeah. athlete. He, he, was, he put his heart season. out there. And we can't the rip him for it. We, we I'm not going to rip on him. I'm not going to rip on him for just one performance. I'm going to look at his body of work. So we're, we're throwing out stats out there. Let the NBA in total minutes, total points. Oh, see. Prim. Career high, 27 four he point, single point, kept point, the I single-handedly drove the MVP bus for James Harden on this network and this show. Trust me, okay? So I'm, we're not talking about anything other than last night. What was your question? What happened to him <laughs> last night? That was an out-of-body experience. Or oh, don't you rep the Bay Area? I do rep the Bay Area. I thought you were going to bring I up Houston. I thought you were going to bring up Lil B. Because I, I can't, this is, it defies logic what happened to Harden last night, Some so it's got to be a little... but they look like sneakers. <laughs> See, I don't know nothing about... See, so, Lil B, he got to I'm sorry, James Harden. All you had to do was explain that you were doing the Lil B cooking dance. Awesome. But see, Iman Shumpert earlier today, he was smart. Lil B, he said, I'm sending a warning to LeBron James, Kyrie, J.R. Smith, and Iman Shumpert. Y'all stealing swag. Lil B cooking dance, what y'all doing? Hashtag war. Shumpert cut it off before it got to this point. Appreciate the swag, killer. I cooks, I chef, all love. And Lil B said, appreciate it, brother. I got you. Enough said, go Cavs. Cavs are moving on. Harden's going home. Let me just say this before I get back to you and your Lil B fandom. Lil B, no trouble here, but I just say you should drop an al album ASAP. Has I, he ever been hotter than he is right now? I think he, he's super relevant. He's an underground, he's a mainstream guy, and being in the Bay Area, I was exposed to Lil B. You know, I have my vans on all the time. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, I mean, Lil B, if you need a female voice on there, I, I got some rapping experience, so I heard I'm that. there for you, bro. I'm going to tell you, he needs something. <laughs> he needs some help.
They need some help. So right. maybe. What is he? What right. is he maybe. now? He's 25 years old. Brandon Wait a second. Christopher right. McCarthy. Yeah. No, I think I think you're good. You know, just sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. But I don't think he needs a well, moment. Wait, 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 wait a second, Mike. Wait a second. Moment, though, but an album, though. Though. I don't believe in curses. Okay. But you visiting the show? I don't want no trouble from Lil B. No, no. I think, we need all the help I, I, we can get. Don't so no, watch no album, but a remix. This is this no is not album. No album, but a remix. It's not the view of the entire show, but Lil B. I wish I had more hands so I could give your album six. Thumbs down. <laughs> Six. Oh, man. Six so we are going to break on that note. All right. Coming up on his Yeah, you can use mine with a. I've got a band aid on it. Coming up, the Chicago Bulls have fired their head coach, Tom Thibodeau. Not an unexpected, but was it really necessary? We're going to discuss that. And also, Miss Little Riley Curry won the post game press conference again. Is she more popular than her dad at this point? What a, what a she's troll so job. Adorable. <laughs> you got she's like a cutie. Him, so. Yeah, dude. Love her. WEI Radio Boston, Lil B gonna be after you. Listen, we can have him on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Metro for this reason. It's common sense. With Metro PCS, I only spend 30 bucks a month. Unlimited data, talk, and text. And on top of that, Metro puts me on T-Mobile's fast nationwide network. Who taught you about Metro? You did, baby. Who taught you about common sense? I'll see. Metro PCS, nationwide unlimited data, talk, and text. $30, period. And right now, when you buy a phone, get a second 4G smartphone free. Need new tires? Right now at Pet Boys, when you get three Falcon, Cooper, or Hankook tires, you get the fourth tire free instantly. Plus, get no interest and paid in full within 12 months on your Pet Boys credit card. Trust the boys to get you there. Nissan gave a lucky few the ride of their life in the 2015 Nissan Altima. Where am I going? Where am I going? Nissan Altima. <laughs> with blind spot warning and up to 270 horsepower. Get the ride of your life at your local Nissan store. Lease Altima just $189 per month plus bonus cash or get up to $1,000 bonus cash on select models. Bonus cash ends June 1st. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Nissan. Innovation that excites. Allergies distracting you? When your symptoms start, doctors recommend taking Claritin every day of your allergy season. Claritin provides powerful, non-drowsy, 24-hour relief for fewer interruptions from the amazing things you do every day. Live Claritin clear. Pennzoil is taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch at PennzoilSynthetics.com for special offers. I'm sorry for your loss. Still doesn't feel real. Our time together was so short. Well, since you have Progressive's total loss coverage, we were able to replace your total bike with a brand new one. The tank, the exhaust. Well, she looks just like Roxy. You know, I bet she's in a better place now. I know she is. I feel it in the heart. Actually, the old Roxy's over at the junkyard. Getting you back on a brand new bike. Now that's Progressive. Imagine a world with thousands of characters. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! And thousands of weapons. That's what I'm talking about! Epic gameplay. How about a little backup? I did not expect this kind of turnout. A dragon? You gotta be kidding me! Gamefly. Start your free trial at Gamefly.com. Product shown rated E through M. Hey, searching for a great used car? You got it. Just say, show me millions of used cars for sale at the theallnewcarfax.com, where now you can search with the power of Carfax. Just say, show me cars with no accidents reported. Boom. Or how about, show me cars with only one owner. Pretty cool. Plus, we're the only site where you get a free Carfax report with every car listed. So find the cars you want, avoid the ones you don't. Start your used car search at Carfax.com. His and Hers is presented by 
Metro PCS. Unlimited data, talk, and text for $30. Period. This is one of those nights where the fans just don't want to leave. As Mark Jackson gets a nice embrace from Draymond Green. And you know, Mark, you, you see, we see this all the time, these players coming over that you were part of and part of building up this. What's going through your head right now? Well, proud. At the end of the day, proud. So that was Mark Jackson, who a little over a year ago was in a suit on the sidelines as the head coach for the Golden State Warriors. Fast forward to the present, and he's in a suit calling the games as the ex-coach Washington team he worked with for three seasons at advance of the NBA Finals for the first time in 40 years. So the question we pose, Guy, do you feel sorry for the ex-Warriors coach? You know, I, you know what, Prim, I didn't feel sorry for him last night. What I wanted was more out of him. You know, Mike Green in that situation where he asked him, you know, how does this make you feel? And he said, proud. And he was on the verge of tears. And maybe I just wanted that Oprah moment. I just wanted him to, <laughs> just, that, just to lose it and, and to confess all. Because I want to really know more about that story. I want to know more about uh, more behind the scenes stuff from Mark Jackson's perspective. But in terms of feeling sorry for him, I don't. Because that presumes that the team was ready to go from 51 wins to 67 wins under Mark Jackson. I don't think it would have happened if he had stayed there. I agree. I don't feel bad for him, but I feel for him. That was a powerful moment, and I think Draymond Green going over there and acknowledging him, everyone saw what he had done to that point, you know, supporting his team in any role, supporting his players that he's empowered, like Draymond Green, Harrison Barnes, everyone. So I don't feel bad, but I feel for him. I think it was a great moment for sports to show how people can coexist. You know, coaches can pass on the torch. And um, what he's done for the Warriors, he's empowered players to take on whatever role they need to. Um, not going to talk about, you know, the other logistics, but I I think that his role for the Warriors was so important in developing their identity, and that's what has transcended them this year. Well, and that's why I don't, I don't feel sorry for him. And the more I think about it, I'm actually glad for him. I'm actually glad that he's getting to be there to watch this. And it's a great story, and there's a lot of teachable moments taking place here. We all know that Mark Jackson is a man of, of tremendous faith. And I'm sure he's long since made peace with this and eliminated any sense of bitterness that he may have had about being let go. Um, and I think he's the type of person, he strikes me as the type of person, I don't know him very well, yeah. but he strikes me as the type of guy to understand that this is not about me, you know, uh, that this is about these guys. And if nothing else, Mark Jackson is being celebrated and given a lot of credit. Because to your point, Michael, let's say they don't get to this next level. Eventually, like a guy we're going to talk about in a second, he's, he all, they're all hired to be fired. Instead, a lot of people are looking at this Warriors journey and saying they don't get here without Mark Jackson. So he's at peace with it. I'm happy for him. And for him to be there, I think a lot of people are putting themselves in Mark Jackson's shoes saying, oh, man, if that was me, I feel some kind of way. But for Mark Jackson to be there and see it, when he said he felt proud, I think he was proud of them. Yeah. And proud knowing, hey, I'm a part of this. Maybe not officially, but I'm a part of what they got. I mean, it's like yeah. you said, you know, along the journey. You know, they were, when he got the job, they're a lottery team, and you, if you haven't mentioned that the Golden State Warriors are going to be in the NBA Finals, and not only in the NBA Finals, Prem, but as NBA, in the NBA Finals as favorites, you'd be laughed, you'd yeah. be laughed out of the studio. You'd be yeah. laughed off the court, wherever you he are. He deserves a lot I of credit, was, and he's getting it. I was kind of torn. I mean, I don't know what else I would have expected from him, because obviously it was an emotional moment. For him to say any more than just proud would have been taking away something from the team and their success. But when I look at him, I mean, it's just part of the business. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of the credit has to go to Steve Kerr, though, really, for no what doubt. he's done. You know, Mark ja Jackson has done a, an amazing job developing that culture, improving the culture there. But Steve Kerr, you know, he's done an amazing job. Keep this, this team very cool, calm, and collective. Absolutely. And he knows how to win. So he's been that guy for them that's given them that push. Bottom line, everything ha happens for a reason. Steve Kerr and Alvin Gentry, uh, yes. by the way. So I mentioned cold business, hired to be fired. Woo. The Bulls finally oh, have oh. fired head coach Tom Thibodeau. Uh, Thibs went 255 and 139 in five seasons in Chicago. They made the playoffs all five years, but never could get over that hump, in large part uh, because Derrick Rose always seem to be battling some kind of injury. Bulls GM Gar Foreman said, thanks for the work, but quote, teams that consistently perform at the highest levels are able to come together and be unified across the organization, staff, players, coaches, management, and ownership. When everyone is on the same page, trust develops and teams can grow and succeed together. Unfortunately, there has been a departure from this culture. 
Tell us how you really feel. Was this absolutely <laughs> necessary, Michael? Certainly seems that way. I'll tell you, it wasn't necessary, uh, this disgraceful statement hmm. from Jerry Reinsdorf. You want to move on from Tom Thibodeau. It has been the, uh, the, the worst... Uh, secret, worst kept secret in the NBA for the last couple of years. Well, thankfully they didn't squat on him until the other jobs yeah, were filled, okay, like there were they reports did, that but, they were going to the do, statement, thankfully. They came out with this statement basically saying, you read between the lines in the statement, uh, he's stubborn, he doesn't work well with others, he's the reason our, our organizational culture is what it is right yeah. now, so we have to move on from him. So I think they could have been a little classier uh, in their statement. In terms of was it necessary, they certainly thought so. And, you know, Cheney, I, I think it rings of Golden State, yes. Mark Jackson, and yes. Steve Kerr. Think about it. The Bulls won 50 games this year. Golden State won 51 games last year. Okay. They felt like they could go. They had gone as far as they could go with Mark Jackson. They turned it over to Steve Kerr. Look where they are right now. And the Bulls clearly think they've got something else left. They in certainly them. got some work to do at the offensive end of the floor. Absolutely. When I heard this news, I was like, this is very Mark Jackson esque because. Someone brought up the idea that it was taking your team to new heights, soaring to new heights. They were discussing this on the, as they were receiving the trophies. And I think that's an interesting theory. Do you fire a coach because he's not taking them as far as they need to be? Or do you fire a coach because of other reasons? And yeah, I, Oklahoma City. Yeah, OKC, okay, everyone. Example, yeah. Denver, it's happened. You've coached yeah. the year one year, then Knicks the next. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's an interesting conversation to have. But I think overall that Tom Thibodeau, he's, he's done a great job with the team. but. You need freshness. You need something that will make teams inspired to play um, every day, you know, in the locker room, taking care of everything. So it, even though it's disappointing to, for a good coach to leave, he has good options. He yeah. has suitors. He's gonna, I think well, he's going to be go. fine. Yeah. He's going to be fine. But the team, fresh starts are great. They should I be think... so lucky if the next guy, maybe it's Fred Hoiberg from Iowa State, becomes Steve Kerr to... To, their, uh, to, to Mark Jackson for Thibodeau. You know, I think this was absolutely necessary. And I was just doing a story, and I talked to our NBA insider, Mark Stein, just yesterday, and he thought they actually might draw out this process when, at the same, when we knew that this was going to be an inevitable move. And I think it was good that they just pulled the trigger on this. In the beginning, when I heard the rumors, I thought, you know what, this is a guy that has a winning percentage of 64%, which is fourth highest in the NBA. He's led the team to five consecutive playoff appearances. But I think the problem was, and I don't know if any of us will really know what was going on inside that organization, but there was always this talk of how much dissension there was between the front office and how he ran the team. Sounds how like the 49ers, been, Harbaugh almost. Yeah, and how yeah. he might have run some of the players into the ground yeah. and how they developed so many injuries. Yeah, no, listen, I'm sh this folk, there's a lot of blame to go around. But you would like to think that when you're talking about a good basketball coach who, as you just mentioned, Shanae, is going to make another team, I don't know, the Pelicans, I know the Magic like Scott Skiles, or the, the, the Nuggets, whoever, he's going to make another team very happy he's very close soon. Close the gap. Close the gap. You know what I mean? You would think that a group of adult males will figure out a way to all get on the same page and get along for the, for the, for the, uh, the good of the general, the team, the vision. All I know is that including playoffs, Mike, Thibodeau coached in 445 games. You know how many Derrick Rose played in? 210. Thank you very much. So he never, I, I just, this yeah. year they underachieved to me. I don't know what was wrong with him in the playoffs, but in previous years, all I know is he never had the team he was supposed to have, and yet they constantly overachieved and battled and went to the playoffs and acquitted themselves. See, that's what I was going to say to you. There's an elephant in the room, and the elephant's wearing a Derrick Rose jersey. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You think about it. You don't have an MVP for, for half the time you've been coaching, and now you're not sure what to do as a coach, but more than that, the front office. Do you commit to somebody else? Do you say, we're going to move on from Derrick Rose, or do you play this waiting game? It's a tough place to be. Yeah. So I can understand, I don't know all the dynamics of the tension between the front office and the coaching right. staff, but that would be a real big sticking point. Yeah. If your coach is trying to win games, and the front office, you say, this is our guy, yeah. we're going to wait for him. As a coach, you usually don't think big picture. The yeah, big picture is the minutes, tomorrow. Perm talked about it. The minutes yeah. restriction was But the key as a coach yeah. is buying in. You need to have everyone buy into your system. And it's not just your players. It's your system. Yeah. So if you can buy into a system, then good things are going to happen. We'll see what happens with that. Hey, let's talk about Riley Curry, guys. She is so adorable. Once again, she proved why she is the greatest Curry. Her post-game performance part two is coming up after the break. Change is good, man. It is? It's Change inevitable. Is Change is inevitable. They're better for all parties.